New data from the Competition Bureau says Canada's various industries just aren't fighting as hard as they can for business. They say competition has gotten weaker over time, which is hurting both consumers and the economy. So what does this mean for Canadians and the economy? For more on this report, let's bring in Ian Lee. He's an associate professor of the Sprott School of Business at Carleton University and joins us live in Ottawa. So Ian, first, just what are your thoughts on this report overall? I, I, I'm guessing it probably doesn't surprise you. It doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, we've known this. People that study productivity, of course, our eyes glaze over when we hear that phrase, but people that study productivity and competitiveness have known that um, we've got some serious problems in Canada. And uh, the importance of this study today is that it was uh, it's released by the Competition Bureau uh, under its brand, if we can call it that. They, uh, there was a whole number, of, a great number of economists and statisticians that worked on this using uh, statistics uh, previously not available from Statistics Canada, including uh, data from corporate income tax returns. And they showed that the competitiveness of Canada has declined in the last 20 years, which is corroborated, of course, by the declining uh, productivity numbers that Finance Canada has talked about, that the Bank of Canada has talked about. So it's important, but it's confirming what we already know. So what's the reason for Canada's economy having less competition than it used to? The, uh, I, I think part of the blame has to be placed on the, uh, on the uh, failure, if you will, to enforce the Competition Act perhaps as aggressively as it could be. Let me explain that and back up for one moment. They correctly said and identified empirically, factually, that industries are becoming more and more concentrated. So concentrated is just a fancy academic term for saying there's fewer and fewer, but bigger and bigger companies in each industry. So instead of having 10 or 20 or 30 companies, say in the telecom space, we've got three. And we've known literally since the time of Adam Smith, 250 years ago, you know, the invisible hand and the wealth of nations character, that, that a concentrated industry is less competitive. It doesn't, it, it doesn't compete as hard and cut its prices as aggressively because it doesn't have to. And, and so what's happened is our industries are becoming more concentrated, principally because of mergers and acquisitions where larger firms are buying up smaller firms and the industry is becoming more concentrated as a result. Not just groceries. This is going on in, in, in multiple uh, industries, uh, Andrew. And so to remind us of why that's important and how it's affecting Canada and, and Canadians. Well, it eventually, and I, I know this seems like a long sort of indirect chain, but it leads to lower levels of prosperity. Um, I, I was just talking about this in my class this morning to my students. I said, you know, we Canadians, you know, we're very proud of our country, understandably, but, you know, we think all wealthy countries are equally the same. But we make on average about $15,000 less per year per person than the Americans do. They have higher productivity. They have much greater degrees of product of, of competitiveness. You know, firms going after each other in industry after industry, and thus much greater levels of innovation. The, very quickly, Andrew, the great economist, I think he's the greatest economist of 300 years, was Joseph Schumpeter, the person who uh, created the first theory of innovation, and he coined that phrase creative destruction. He said firms innovate because they try to get an advantage over all the other firms by creating a better mousetrap so they will attract customers. And there's this ceaseless innovation that drives up the, 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 the productivity of the economy, it produces better mousetraps, and it drives down prices. Well, we don't have enough creative destruction in Canada, although that may grate on some people's ears. That's the problem. We don't have enough competitiveness. We don't have enough dynamism. We don't have enough innovation, and it's leading to a lower, uh, a reduced standard of living. Is that cultural? Is there a way to get that, that back? You've asked a very deadly question. I, I, I've been talking about this for probably 30 years, and I'm going to say something that probably is very uh, un, unfashionable and unpopular, but we are, I think, my interpretation is Canada is more risk averse. We're, uh, we're, we're more small C conservative, and I'm not referring to politics. You know, we have less numbers of new business startups per 100,000 of population compared to the United States. And it's, you can see it embedded in so much of our laws. Our Bank Act is designed to keep out foreign banks. Our, our Airline Act is designed to keep out foreign competitors. Same with our telecom. And so we've engineered into our much of our legislation and our policy framework 
reduced competitiveness because we think it's somehow going to protect us from the vicissitudes of all this change caused by uh, you know um, uh, this dynamic uh, creative destruction. But in the short run, it may benefit somebody, but in the in the medium and longer term, it doesn't. And I so I think it is cultural. Americans are much more aggressive, much more dynamic in terms of willing to take risk, and you can see it in in the, the statistics for new business startups. Not to mention their much greater support for competitiveness in industry after industry, where there are far fewer barriers to entry by a new competitor into mm -hmm. an existing market. Ian, thank you. Ian Lee is an associate professor of the Sprott School of Business at Carleton University. We reached him in Ottawa.